Not too long ago, we released a video called The Glory Days of Xbox Live. And if you watched that video and reminisced the best days of the Xbox, and you zoom and enhanced at a certain point, you might have caught glimpses of a game that was known as Doritos Crash Course. This game was really, really unique, but I think it actually played a very important part in gaming in those great years of Xbox Live between 2010 and 2011. But honestly, what was the deal with a free-to-play Doritos promotional game that had 1.7 million people download and play that game? Let's talk about it. In the year 2008, Doritos and Xbox joined forces to make a competition called Unlock Xbox. It would be a competition where aspiring game creators would be able to pitch their ideas to a team of panelists who would go through all of the ideas and pick a winner. And whoever won the competition would have their game made into an actual game released on the Xbox Arcade. And it would be obviously sponsored and funded by Doritos. And during this initial competition, the winner was selected by the board of Xbox and Dorito employees. They decided to go ahead and greenlight the game Dash of Destruction, which would later be called Doritos. Dash of Destruction. The idea was originally conceived by Mike Borland, who won the overall competition, and he got some cool stuff like 10 Xbox 360 games and a ton of 2008 technology that sounds super underwhelming by today's standards, but hey, good for him. Of course, Dash of Destruction wasn't really the most popular game, even though it was free. The game focused on you playing as a Tyrannosaurus Rex who runs around and tries to collect Dorito cars? Dorito trucks? Yeah, he, he has to eat Dorito trucks. It, it, it didn't seem like over the top advertising at all. But either way, upon the release of the game, the game did well enough to warrant another competition to happen the following year for a 2010 release. And this time, for whatever reason, the panel decided on two winners, which would end up resulting in Doritos Crash Course and Doritos Harm's Way to end up being released. We probably won't dedicate a whole video to Harm's Way, even though it was a decent game and really easy to get achievements really quickly if you're trying to get your gamer score up back in the day. I know I played that game just for the gamer score and nothing else. But Doritos Crash Course was definitely the more popular of the two because it just had so much replayability and just kind of fun game mechanics that really set it apart, especially for a free game. And looking back now, we can really appreciate this game just because it was released before a time where free games always meant that the game would have a ton of microtransactions and other types of tricks to make you spend money on it. This game was completely free to play beginning to end. It had about four hours hours of content and it was multiplayer so you could play with your friends you could kind of play it semi cooperatively as well and they did add some DLC that was only 160 Microsoft points which was like two two dollars three three dollars or something for a bunch of extra maps but that was only after you beat the whole game which was a really awesome concept for 2008 they really kind of chilled with the overall promotion of Doritos. They didn't need to shove it in your face and make you try to grab a bag of Doritos every time you're doing something. And that was really appreciated too. But yeah, the winner of the game was Jill Robertson, who was inspired by TV shows like Ninja Warrior that were really popular in Japan before it became a huge hit in America, and thought of a really interesting idea for a 2.5D platformer that kind of incorporated a lot of these ideas in a high speed and over the top fun timer based way. The game featured three different locations which was kind of interesting. It started in America which was kind of just like the simplest of all of the types of platforming you'd go against and then once you completed all of the levels in America you would move on to the European levels which also were really cool but a little bit more challenging as well before finally facing off in Japan which by far were the most difficult and hardest levels in the game that really took a lot of focus and several tries to get through it. The game was really addicting in a sense where you felt a huge 
feeling of accomplishment and achievements and not in the the EA way of you having to open up your wallet to feel the accomplishments. This was real accomplishments. You completed something cool and you got through the next checkpoint and each checkpoint meant you could make it just a little bit further and hopefully make it to the end of the course. I remember playing this game back in 2010 with my friends doing four player co-op online and even sometimes when I was just hanging out with my friends in real life we'd throw this game on just because it had split screen and it was something a little different than Halo when we got tired of playing a shooter. It was something that involved jumping and precision and it was really fun. And it was really accessible too because the game was free. So you didn't have to worry about whether or not someone was willing to drop even five or ten dollars on a game because it was just outright free. It was it was just a fun experience that you didn't have to really get scammed out of anything. They didn't nickel and dime you. They didn't say, hey, buy a hundred microtransactions to unlock the new avatar skin. They just let you use your Xbox avatar. If you spent money on the Xbox store with your avatar, GG, you could see him run in Doritos Crash Course, but you didn't have to buy anything and that was appreciated. And mind you, that was back when the Xbox Live avatars looked great. Nowadays, they're terrifying. Just, they're the absolute worst. They, they give me, they give me nightmares. But this game also was really appreciated because it wasn't just the simple same over and over obstacle course type game. They had a ton of variety in what type of things you interacted with in each level. Sometimes you would see a ton of swinging hammers for instance that would knock you 100 feet off of the platform and into the water. GG! But there was also trampolines, swinging ropes, climbing chains, conveyor belts, and a ton of other stuff that was really unique to this game. And, and, and water balloons. Yeah, there, there were a ton of water balloons. I got killed so many times by the water balloons. But you know what? It was worth it! The game obviously was extremely popular, and even though Xbox and Doritos stopped doing their competition to make more games uh, after Harm's Way and Doritos Crash Course, Doritos Crash Course was such a hit, it warranted a sequel just three years later called Doritos Crash Course 2 that also was released for free. Except it was awful. Just just the worst thing. It was just a great example of something good being dumb. The game instead opted for a stars and coins system where instead of you just simply beating a level to unlock the next level, you had to find stars and unlock levels that way and buy power-ups and buy things to update your character's appearance, but don't worry! Microsoft points could solve a lot of that. If you spent money, you could unlock more levels and go back and redo the same one level a hundred times to unlock the next one, or open your wallet and you can play the game the way that you kind of want to play it. Honestly, I didn't put more than five minutes into this game after I realized that. I just noped out of it, because the cool thing about Doritos Crash Course to begin with was the game was free! As soon as they added all the microtransactions, that's just how the gaming industry turned. Doritos Crash Course was, was, a, was a prime example of this. Uh, and, and fun fact, Doritos Crash Course 2 even shut down like their live servers in 2014 because no one cared. No one cared when they realized that this Doritos game made you pay extra money. Couldn't, couldn't we just buy the chips and let us unlock the levels? I would have done that. But no, no, they, they, they done themselves wrong. And I'm still salty about it to this day. I don't I don't care. I don't care if 343 Industries killed Halo. I don't care if Activision killed Call of Duty. Doritos killed themselves with Doritos Crash Course 2. Apparently there was another Doritos Crash Course game released called Doritos Crash Course Go. It was released on the Windows Store. I I haven't played it. I I don't know if I should play it. Oh, I just watched gameplay of it. It's uh it's just regular Doritos Crash Course, except on the go if you count your PC as on the go, I guess. Yeah, I don't really know. They decided not to make another sequel and just remake the first one and just throw it and port it on the PC. Why not? Let's make some more money or or not? I, I what? Uh, it, it turns out that that game got delisted too. So, um, yeah, they, they gave up on both of the games. They're just not available anymore. Rightfully so, because they, they really dropped the ball. Doritos Crash Course was so cool. It was so great. And, uh, 
they really just let us down. But guys, if you like what we do here, you like these retrospectives on kind of the things from the awesome days of Xbox Live, we really do enjoy making these types of videos. We want to do more. We want to cover things from back then and also some stuff going on now and maybe even a little older, maybe some classic Xbox stuff. So if you like that, you like my voice, you like Luke's editing style, consider subscribing. We'd appreciate it. Turning notifications on because YouTube's awful at that and maybe hitting the like button or leaving a comment with your experience on Doritos Crash Course. Here's some videos we've made also in the past you can check out and we'll see you all next time with a brand new video.